Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here, and in today's video, we are going to be installing the Wham Bam Flex Plate system into the Corality CR10S Pro. I am super excited to install this Flex Plate system. I've heard a lot of great things about it, and I'm really hyped to see kind of how it stacks up and how well it actually works. So let's get into that. As always, huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I've gotten some new supporters lately, and I wanted to welcome you all. Thank you guys so, so much. So the flex plate system, first thing I want to say, came packed insanely well, like ridiculous. So it came in a bag to protect it from any kind of weather. Um, if it's raining, then the water will obviously not be able to get in through that bag. Uh, it then came inside of this cardboard box, which I actually could not get open with my hands. And um, maybe I was, uh, maybe I should have pulled harder, but I ended up using some scissors to get that open. And inside you've got this thick cardboard that's got saran wrap, that's got the flex plate system inside. And then again, it's in another envelope inside all of that. So a huge hats off to Wham Bam for just the insane level of shipping that they went through to make sure that this is not damaged, scratched, bent, or anything like that. Um, definitely an insane level of thought went into that uh, packaging. So this system consists of three different parts. You've got the magnetic uh, magnetic base that will permanently adhere to the 3D printer. You've got the like spring steel esque. Um, uh, part that will actually be coming on and off and it's just held on by magnets then you've got the actual wham bam pex sheet which is the magical surface that will allow your prints to stick incredibly well uh, time and time again so it also came with a nice front and back uh, kind of instructions and uh, just things to note as well as some cool stickers so i went ahead and removed the aluminum um, that was on my CR 10 s Pro. There's these little corner tabs on the CR 10 s Pro that initially I tried to install this flex plate system and leave them in place. Don't do that. The The best thing for me that I saw in the end was just to remove these all together. Um, once you install this flex plate system, you're not going to be needing to use those ever again to clamp things down. So there's really no point in keeping them on there. So I just went ahead and used a little uh, needle nose pliers as well as a Allen key to remove uh, or to basically clamp onto the lock nut and then undo the little screws holding the two in the front and then the two in the back. Um, the ones in the back are held on by two screws a piece and the ones in the front are held on by one screw a piece. But you can keep them sure if you ever decide that one day maybe you want them again but I don't see why you'd ever need them again. Um, so once that's done just go ahead and clean your surface off. I just used a little microfiber towel with some isopropyl alcohol um, that was really just to get rid of any smudges or oils from my finger. I then went ahead and peeled off about an inch to two inches of the uh, magnetic backed uh, part that's going to be permanently adhered onto this aluminum heat bed. And I peeled back and I just kind of folded it in place so that way it wouldn't try to um, move on me while I was trying to install it. And so kind of my strategy, which is sort of pretty much along sides of what they recommend uh, is to peel back an inch, line up the back corners. So I basically lined up the top left and right corner. And once I saw that they were lined up, I pushed them into place and used one hand to peel away at the backing and the other hand to just go back and forth and apply some pressure um, as I was peeling it away. And that's just to ensure that it's stuck down nice and hard and that you're not getting any air bubbles. Um, it really wasn't difficult to install at all. Um, and again, I think that I was really happy with the method that I used to install this, which again, peel one inch on the back, push it down on the back corners and then slowly pull away with one hand as you use your other hand to just put down pressure and ensure that there's no bubbles that are uh, building up. Next, I went ahead and placed the spring steel in place, um, just it, again, it sticks on really, really well with those magnets. So I placed that in the in its spot, and then I also did the same thing again with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and the microfiber towel. Um, just from touching it a little bit, I did when I unboxed it. There was a few fingerprints on there, and I mean, it might not make a huge difference, but still, I want to start off with uh, you know as least oils on that plate as possible. Uh, and then for the PEX sheet, I actually did the exact same thing where I peeled off about one to two inches and I lined it up on the back side of that flex plate and then uh, rinsed and repeated. So one hand again to uh, basically peel off the backing and one hand to ensure that there was no bubbles that were uh, starting to form. 
it's much easier than doing something like a phone case because the sheet is way thicker, so it's not like uh, quite so, when you use the word floppy, it doesn't move around nearly as much on you, which makes it a lot easier to install. And you can, on this one, you can actually see where the adhesive is stuck down. It kind of has the little, I guess, bubbles or splotches where you can see, okay, cool, like this is good. And if you have a big one, you'd obviously know that, hey, there's a pocket of air so you can pull it back. But I, I didn't run into any issues with that at all. Then you can go ahead and peel off the top little plastic protective coating that was on that PEX sheet to expose the surface down below. Now one of the most important things is that you need to scuff up the surface using this um, steel mesh and so I just went ahead and applied decent pressure. I mean I wasn't going down too hard but a decent decent pressure and then just kind of doing small circular motions at least at the beginning and then I kind of just went around and around and around multiple times and all that that's doing is you're slightly scuffing the surface um, it's really really fine steel wool so I mean it's it's hardly noticeable but if you look in the light you can see kind of where it's starting to uh, leave little tiny bits of um, I guess surface scratch, if you can call it that, it doesn't sound right, but all that that's gonna do is it's gonna allow your print to actually grip onto the surface better. So um, definitely do this. This is not a, um, you know, maybe if you're not getting good adhesion, no, like do this to ensure that you actually uh, are successful when using this, this surface. And then I just use some isopropyl alcohol again to clean up any of the dust that this might've left behind. And I went ahead and re-leveled the bed. I probably didn't have to, but I did some other stuff with the bed prior to this. So I wanted to make sure that my print was going to be nice and uh, have a good first layer. Again, if you do run into any issues with um, prints not sticking to this, then I would say to, again, make sure you've used isopropyl alcohol on the build surface, as well as use that steel mesh that will, um, from everything I've seen, be really a deciding factor into how well this thing works. But I went ahead and printed out a 120 millimeter fan grill that's really flat that typically would be pretty annoying to remove um, from like a glass sheet or something like that just to see how well it stuck down and how easy it was to remove. Uh, it was actually almost too easy to remove. Um, basically when I went to grab the flex plate to flex it, it just popped right off, which uh, it's PEX, which I think is their own formulation, but I believe it's at least PEI based. And that's one thing PEI is known for is that when the bed is hot, uh, filament sticks really well, especially something like PLA, which is what they printed with. And then as soon as it cools, it literally releases the print, which I think is what happened here. But that's how you install it. Um, I'm going to be doing a follow-up after I've gotten a chance to use it for probably, it's probably gonna be a month or two really, because um, I've got some insanely large prints I'll be doing on this and I'll be able to test out how well it holds up over time and just how effective it is. So be expecting a uh, another video on this in some time when I've gotten, again, a bit more time under my belt and I can see truly how well this thing does, uh, does end up working out for me. And I will go ahead and place links in the description down below if you guys wanna find out more uh, or purchase one for yourself there are tons of different sizes from all of the creality machines to delta machines to uh, real core i mean they they're just adding all sorts of the most common uh, printers bed sizes to their catalog which is wicked cool so i hope you guys really enjoyed this video again i've been seeing a lot about wham bam and wanted to see what all of it was about myself and the cr tennis pro is a machine that i plan on using a ton so this is one upgrade that to me i knew was going to be a no-brainer to have done. So on that note, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in supporting the channel more so, links will be down below to my Patreon with some really cool rewards. But if nothing else, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome videos. You guys rock and I hope you guys all have a fantastic week. Looking forward to seeing you guys in my next video and I am out. Peace guys.